The week leading up to Easter, the Holy Week, is a big deal in Italy. It's a big deal in Sicily, and it's especially a big deal in Trapani. And that's because of this, the Misteri di Trapani. On Good Friday, there's a full day-long procession featuring 20 floats with lifelike sculptures depicting individual scenes of the events of the Passion. These Misteri are amongst the oldest continuously running religious events in all of Europe, having taken place every Good Friday since way back before the Easter of 1612. It normally runs for over 24 hours straight and stands the longest religious festival in all of Italy. It all starts here at 2 p.m. on Good Friday when the Misteri exit from the Chiesa del Purgatorio in the heart of Trapani's historic center. This is the Ushita of the Misteri in Trapani. Very, very important, important moment of the procession where all of the statues exit the church here just behind us. Now, one by one they go, the band plays, they come out, they make their appearance for the first time in Trapani. What will be 24 hours, 20 different statues marching around the streets all night long. So this is just the beginning. One by one, each mystery emerges, accompanied by groups of up to 200 people. The volunteers start with the religious heads, including priests and ministries from around Trapani, and each group has a full marching band that plays specific funeral dirges throughout the procession. Of course, there's the group of people carrying the heavy structures, known as Masadi. Each group is represented by a different guild in Trapani, like the fishermen, metal workers, hairdressers, carpenters, bakers, butchers, and farmers. And one person, the Console, is sort of in charge of everything in the group. Each one of the bands comes from a different town or village from all around the Trapani province, like Erice or Marsala or San Vito. Organizing something like this is a huge task that takes a full year of preparation. The local clergy, including parish priests and bishops, play a central role in overseeing the religious aspects of the event, including blessings, prayers, and liturgical rites, whereas the local government provides support and assistance that includes logistical support, security arrangements, traffic control, and coordination with other public services. And for the spectators, these days you can find QR codes posted in the streets and maps explaining the intricate course of the events which changes every year to give the different streets in town an opportunity to be a closer part of the action from year to year. So there's all sorts of great spots to watch the, the Mistani. You can be right at the beginning. A lot of people think that's an important place to be. It's the most important part. But just over here, you can get a good spot and see the statues up close as they come by down the streets. Okay, important sound right there. That clacking is a signal to the guys carrying the things that uh, it's time to get ready. You hear the first clack. That means get ready, and the second clack means lift it up and go. So let's go catch the second one. This little wooden device made with specific measurements in wood called the chakola has been used in the mystery for over 200 years. One member of the Masari is designated as the chakola shaker that alerts the group when to get ready, when to lift and move, and when to stop. They always move in a slow swaying motion called the anakata, a sort of rhythmic rocking. And as they move down the street, they can perform a vutata and turn towards a specific window or business that's either offering a blessing or flowers or just in need of some spiritual energy. Each group during the procession has their devotees in the front. Many times these are children and females all dressing in matching outfits or costumes, carrying significant props that tie into their part of the story. You didn't realize what happens during the procession is it tells the whole story of what happened with Jesus on Easter. This part of the story, as you'll see as these guys come through, Jesus is kind of getting chained up, okay? He's been arrested, and they're kind of, you know, locking him up, throwing him in jail kind of thing. The story of the Passion of Christ, if you don't know, is the story of when Jesus Christ was arrested, persecuted, and crucified. It's been depicted in countless ways since 30 AD, but the way they do it here shows you a pretty clear portrait of what is going on. If you follow along, it's simple. With names like the arrest, the crowning with thorns, and the wound to the chest, these sometimes brutal and graphic representations are thorough, and I can imagine them leaving a lasting impression on children and everyone that witnesses them, which I'm sure is the point. Processions like this happen all over Catholic parts of Europe, and many cities in Italy have their version of this. But very few of them are as old, and none of them are as long. Okay, guys, it's 6.30. 
the sun is setting, we're on the beautiful Corso Vittorio Emanuele, the main street in Trapani, and the procession is just making its way around this main street. That's why it's so crowded. Everybody's here to see the procession. If you take a look this way, we're going to come around this way, and as you can see, it's starting to come down the road behind me. So over the next like two or three hours, all 20 statues will make their way down this road. And as you can see, it's like a party out here. It's like a parade. Everybody's going to come through here. How did this act of carrying around sculptures become a common way to tell this story of the Passion? Well, in the late Middle Ages, there was a phenomena of plays depicting the Passion. But after some time, some of them sort of mutated into farces, where sometimes the theatrical side of the performances outweighed the religious importance, which didn't please the Catholic hierarchies. So in the 16th century, in many places, these passion plays were outlawed, leading to these alternative methods of telling the story, where acting and theater weren't involved, but artistic representation was used. It was sort of a silent narration of the story. Now imagine that every Good Friday for the past 400 years, right here in this town, they've had this exact kind of procession. And of course, over that time, it's become more and more elaborate, and is now an extremely big deal here. In many ways, the mysterious Trapanese identity it's what they're mainly known for. The tenth group in the procession is a little different from the rest, as it has vocal singers accompanying the band performing the choral song Popolo, meaning the people. Now speaking of the people, the spectators that come usually have to have some sort of strategy about where and when to partake in the festivities. Okay, we're in a hot spot here, right in front of the cathedral. Cathedral San Lorenzo, this is where all the action happens, okay? Every single piece of the procession, they come and they stop right here. You get to see everybody. You get to see the band, you get to see the statues, and all the action's happening right here, right now on Corso Vittorio Emanuele. I'll be going to church here on Sunday. Since I live in the historic center, I'm able to take little breaks. But of course, when you stop home for a nap, you can keep watching it on YouTube. Sorry, we didn't film for the full 24 hours, but we came close. Trying to get food on Friday night can be difficult as well, as you can see by my boy Casimiro's place. I instead waited 30 minutes for a pane camilza from Petito. And speaking of breaks, one of my favorite moments of the procession is that around midnight, all the misteri stop in the piazza and take a rest. It's a great time to take a closer look at the sculptures and to chat with the people involved, like the regional counselor from Trapani, Dario Safina. I'm here with my good friend Dario Safina. Tell me, how has the procession been for you this evening? The misteri sono Trapani. Questa manifestazione, questa processione identifica la nostra città. Ci stanno i giovani, gli anziani, eh, i giovani di mezza età, tutte le generazioni sono attorno, stanno attorno ai misteri. È la più importante giornata per Trapani. Non ci stanno distinzioni di sesso, non ci stanno distinzioni di, di, di ceto e dunque la processione dei misteri anche per uno come me che non è un cattolico rappresentano tutto ciò che Trapani rappresenta nel mondo e dunque va difesa, va, va proiettata nel futuro e vanno, vanno tutelati questi ragazzi che ogni anno più di 4.000 si dedicano a questa processione. What time is it here? It's almost 1 in the morning. It's a really cool moment for the spectators to be able to get up close to the statues and see them really close. I mean, this is right here. We can see this is right here. I can touch this thing. Probably shouldn't be touching it, but I am. These lifelike sculptures are made of wood, canvas, paper, glue. Some of them are also highlighted by the candles, flowers, guild decorations, and lights. I always find this part a little surreal, very interesting. It's a moment of rest um, to appreciate these beautiful statues and uh, this beautiful procession. After the break, the Mystery sculptures make a silent procession loop around the city, not accompanied by music, and it's more of a time to be silent and reflective of the experience. We took a little nap during some of this time, 
but of course we had to be back at 5.30 a.m. when everybody comes back out and the procession starts all over again. On Saturday morning, it's a different experience, as the majority of people have been up all night and they still have a long day ahead of them. It's a personal sacrifice that every one of these 4,000 volunteers makes, some of them even choosing to walk all night in bare feet. We caught up with a friend of mine who was part of Sculpture Number no. 9 to update us on her night and now morning. Ciao, Anto. Ciao, Mike. How do you feel? It's uh, 6 in the morning. Sì. You feel okay? Uh, sì. So, so bene, anche perché non sono andata a dormire. Sono sveglio ormai si può dire dal lunedì mattina della settimana santa. Eh, ma è emozionante, quindi assolutamente ne vale la pena. So you're one of very few women I notice carrying. La compagnia delle donne dei quattro santi incolorati. Siamo le donne, le figlie, le mogli dei consoli. Il papà è il capo console di questo, di questo gruppo. Noi abbiamo la, la parte di tutta la fragellazione. Quindi il momento in cui Gesù è attaccato, legato con le manette, alla, noi abbiamo le manette, una volta, alla colonna e viene fragellato. Se ben ricordate c'è il film di Mel Gibson, quello è stato proprio so penso, il film più descrittivo della, della, della scena. E anche qui una, si, una persona si può identificare per i propri problemi, per i dolori a, a Gesù in questa situazione. Now as they make their final parade through the streets, they eventually, finally, end up back where they started at the Church of Purgatory. Each group has their final performance or ritual, complete with an encore of sorts, where they go in and come back out and finally go in again. Okay, we made it to the end. They've done the whole procession a few times. And now they finally bring the statues back to rest, back at home in the cathedral where we started yesterday, almost a total day ago. So it's an interesting experience um, doing this all night long. You're, you're, you're very tired, your mind starts to kind of feel fuzzy, you know, and it's looking at very crowded, closer to the time where the final, where, where Mary goes in. I love that in Sicily and in Italy, they tend to lean towards Mary as kind of the highest power to them. You don't see Jesus on crosses everywhere, you see Mary, the mother. And as we all know, the mothers are in charge in Sicily. So fittingly, for this procession, the final sentiment is of Mary grieving for her son. Finally, the end of the procession. The Madonna is inside, and uh, it's, a, it's a big relief for the city. You can feel everybody sigh and say, oh, okay, it's over. It's a very emotional experience there at the end. Um, all in all, a really, really beautiful, misteri, beautiful saints week here in Thrapani. And um, 
I think I'm just going to take one little walk through the church and see what everything looks like inside there. Well, that about does it for Mystere Anthropony. What an epic little while. It's funny, you come off the main road where the whole town is out, and you can still come up here and have a peaceful walk along the wall and enjoy the sea. So final thoughts, uh, it's really the kind of thing you have to come here and see to really understand. You can see videos of people carrying statues and a procession in the streets, but um, there's a feeling, there's an emotion, there's something that's uh, kind of indescribable with words or with videos. It's something you have to see for yourself. Someday, make your way here and experience this here if you ever have a chance. Easter week in Sicily's amazing, but especially Good Friday in Thraveni is uh, kind of an unforgettable experience. So that is Friday and Saturday of the Holy Week in Thropony. Sunday is, of course, Easter. And I started the day at Easter Mass in San Lorenzo Cathedral. And although I practically never attend church service, the last couple of years I've come here to this beautiful cathedral, and it's become a sort of tradition for me. After church, I took a stroll around the city and down to the sea. On a nice day, there's no better place to spend some time with your thoughts and it was a good moment to reflect on the week. Later that evening, I cooked myself dinner and treated myself to my first Italian chocolate giant Easter egg. I was a little confused on how to approach this thing, but was told confidently that the way to do it is to punch it open. Okay, so that's it, right? Well, no, they don't end here. In Italy and around Europe, they have another day tacked on. The Monday following Easter is Pasquetta, and over the past couple of years, I've learned what it's all about, and let me tell you, it's becoming my favorite holiday. It's basically the first opportunity of the year for the Sicilians to have a barbecue. This is carciofo, <laughs> number one in cheddar. Si. <laughs> one, two, three. This one is open and uh -huh. uh, uh, swatch yeah. and water. It's open now. And the side, the, the oil, oil, extra virgin oliva. The number one, Sicily. Okay. Mm -hmm. Up, stop, and sale. 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 A catenelle. <laughs> A catenelle. <laughs> and there's specific foods like artichokes that get thrown on the grill and they eat a lot of meat. It's a great time to unwind after what's normally a busy and hectic week. Pasquetta is a, a moment for, for friends, for, for love, for peace. First of all, it's a religious festivity here and uh, it obviously talks about the resurrection of Christ and for us yeah. it's a sort of a resurrection too it's just after winter it's actually the first opportunity we stay outside with friends you see, in Easter we celebrate with family Easter Monday we stay with friends not family <laughs> and Pasquetta is like a, a chile, chilejo on uh... chilegina sulla torta chilegina sulla torta <laughs> yes <laughs> So there you have it, Easter week in Sicily. Buona Pasquetta. Wait, 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 hold on, I was wrong. There's more. OK.
Okay, we're here in the Piazzetta. This is the same Piazzetta I go and I get coffee every day. My friends own this place. Look, I didn't know. I thought Holy Week was over. I was wrong because today is a celebration. We're no longer grieving. We're bringing out San Francesco di Paola, also known as Santo Padre. He's the father saint of Trapani. His whole story is he's the, he protects the fishermen. I've also heard that you make a promise to him, okay? And if you don't keep your promise, he comes and he hits you with his stick. I love dancing with the saint. Dancing with the saint? Yeah. It's a new show coming out of Sicily. It's like dancing with the stars, only it's dancing with the saints. So it's a different kind of movement in the, in, for the for the Misteri, they do this slow yes. swaying, okay, it's called the Anakata, as I've already told you. This one, I don't know what it's called, but it's, bah, 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 bah. you know, it's more, it's more lively, it's more happy, it's more groovy. I have a story, um, when you insultare, come si dice? A swear word, yeah? You curse, yeah? Uh, in the night, the yeah. saint, uh, he hits you with the stick? Yes. So he's always hitting people with that stick, yeah? Yes. Yeah, we have uh, another whole thing going on. It started It started yesterday, and uh, there's celebrations all week, culminating in another march around the city uh, next weekend. So, will I be there for that? I don't know. While I'm here, I might as well have a drink. We'll see you on the other side.